What's going on? This is Ryan from The Real GPU, and today I'm going to go over my fishing setup. So basically, I'm going to be talking about my rods, my reels, what line I put on each rod, uh, does it have a leader, which baits and which lures I use for each. Essentially, everything that has to do with my fishing setup, we're going to go over it in this video. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is really the cheaper setups that I have. Setups that I've had for years basically because I wasn't into fishing so I didn't, or my parents didn't want to invest a whole lot of money into it. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the Shimano 9 rod and reel combo. It features the Shimano 9 reel accompanied with a medium action Shimano rod. I don't want to get too much into the specifics of the rod just because it's cheap you pretty much get what you pay for it. You can find this reel at Bass Pro for about $15. I'm not entirely sure about the rod because I actually got this rod and reel combo maybe 8 to 10 years ago. But I guess the good thing about that is that it has survived all this time. I actually have fished with this quite a bit and uh, I did actually have it a little bit rusty and dirty and I actually cleaned it all up and now I have been using it. Uh, you can actually see its performance in one of my videos. It's the mangrove snapper video where I go fishing out on the John boat with my cousin. I used this reel to catch a bunch of those snappers and it actually held pretty well. Since this is such a cheap reel, I don't want to waste any of my expensive line. So I just have it spooled with some basic 8 pound monofilament. But I think that 8 pound test on such a cheap reel is a pretty good combo. Next, we're going to talk about the Florida Inshore Spinning Combo. I use this reel similar to how I used the previous reel, um, except I try to avoid this as much as possible because even though this is a pretty decent reel, it's still pretty cheap and it does the same job as another reel that I'm going to talk about later. It's not a bad reel. In fact, it's actually better quality than the one I talked about previously. Um, it's just... it's. It's a very weird limbo because the Shimano 9 is a 2000 sized reel and it's very lightweight. The rod is very lightweight. Uh, so at least if I want to catch something small, I use that rod and reel combo and I can actually get a good fight out of my fish. This combo, I don't know the size of the reel, but it's bigger than a 2000. It's probably about three to 4000. And it comes with a medium heavy rod, which I think is just overkill and that's why I don't really use it that much. But regardless, you can use this uh, however you want, so maybe you would love to have this setup. I'll get a little technical with this reel. Um, it has a 5.2 to 1 gear ratio, which means that every time you turn the handle completely one time, the spool turns 5.2 times. Uh, the important thing to remember here is the higher the gear ratio, the more line uh, is collected per turn of the handle. So if you're uh, deep sea fishing, for example, and, and you catch, I don't know, like a, a dolphin, a wahoo, or a marlin, you know, fish that make strong runs, uh, you want to reel in that line as fast as possible so you don't tire yourself out and so that you don't waste a lot of time. And reels with high gear ratios do a really good job of controlling that. This isn't particularly high, but for an inshore fishing situation, it's perfectly fine. This reel comes in at about $20. Again, I don't know the full rod and reel combo setup, uh, but I'm sure that you can find a rod, maybe even a lighter rod, uh, for around the same price. So right now it's spooled with 30 pound spider wire camo braid. Now I know, why would I put braid on a reel that I rarely use? Essentially, it's because it is, that reel is basically the backup to a reel that I use more often, that again, I'll get into a little bit later. It accomplishes the same task, it's just that that setup is inferior. I just don't like it, it's cheaper. It doesn't feel as good as the other setup. But still, for the price, really good setup for inshore fishing. The next combo we're gonna talk about is the Pen Fierce. Uh, this combo, I believe, goes for around $70 to $80, depending on the size of the reel. believe that the combo is $80, so it's not just the reel. Now, this setup, I actually do use pretty frequently, and it's actually really good. I use this rod to fish for really big fish, so I have caught tarpon on it, I've caught sharks on it, and it fares very, very well. 
The reel has a 5.6 to 1 ratio, which is a little bit more than the last reel. Um, I would prefer for it to be uh, a little bit more, like maybe in the 6 or 7s, but you get what you pay for. This reel or this combo doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, the higher end combos and the higher end reels are the ones that have the higher gear ratios. If you want sort of a performance test, I have a short clip on one of my other videos, the video where I catch my lemon shark. I have a short clip of uh, the shark peeling drag on the rod and you can see just how it fares uh, with the big fish. That lemon shark was about four feet and maybe like 75 pounds. So check that out if you haven't already. On it, I have 40 pound Cast King Invisibraid, which is basically a type of braid that is supposed to be at least somewhat invisible in water. And I think that it performs really well. Um, eventually, I'm gonna get between 60 and 80 pound fluorocarbon leader to put along with that because uh, when I'm fishing for like tarpon, those fish have very good eyesight and using something like a wire leader isn't gonna help. Plus you want something with a little bit of stretch. Braided line has no stretch. And when you're dealing with such a powerful and thrashing fish, uh, you want something that, a line that can handle that type of uh, weight distribution. So having fluorocarbon that gives you a little bit of stretch, that should ultimately help me catch more fish. But if I'm specifically targeting sharks, what I end up doing is tying a 45 pound steel leader to the mono and then I attach a 12 aught circle hook. That's how I caught the lemon shark. Now these last two reels are very near and dear to my heart because I actually bought these uh, rods and reels. They're no longer combos, like I actually mixed and matched them. Uh, and the reason why I bought them is because I decided to get back into fishing. Uh, kind of like an aside here, I kind of got away from fishing. Like I've been fishing all my life but I kind of got away from it because I played a lot of basketball. And really the only times I could go fishing was on the weekends, but then I was playing basketball. And once I graduated uh, high school, that pretty much solved my issues right there, because obviously I'm not playing college basketball. And these were the first two rods that I bought to kind of celebrate the occasion. So this one is the Abu Garcia Black Max Baitcaster Reel, paired up with an ugly stick elite rod. So the Abu Garcia Black Max is a very entry-level baitcaster reel. It doesn't have the quality or the features of something like a Shimano Curado, but it really does get the job done. It's about $40 and I would really only say that it's that price because the materials used aren't really that great. It's mostly made of plastic, which obviously doesn't feel right. It feels just very awkward and stuff. But performance wise, it does very well. If you know what you're doing with the baitcaster, of course. Like I've had my fair share of backlashes, but that's not the problem with the reel. That's a problem with me not knowing what I'm doing. Now I paired up that reel with an Ugly Stick Elite Rod. That rod costs somewhere between $50 and $70, depending on the action, depending on uh, the, the length of the rod. Now in my specific situation, I got a six foot six medium action one piece rod. Six foot six is a very good all purpose size. I got it as a medium action because again, most of the fish that I target are not very big. And even if I do catch big fish, like I catch a lot of peacock bass with that setup and the fights are just amazing because using light tackle to catch big fish is probably one of the most fun things about fishing. I have the reel spooled with 16 pound monofilament. I actually started off with 10 pound fluorocarbon, then I switched it with braid, then I got a nasty backlash and that kind of scared me. I didn't want to lose all that braid, it's expensive. So then I switched it out and then put on 16 pound monofilament. It's worked perfectly fine. So what lures do I put on there? Well, it really depends where I'm fishing it. I use it in both freshwater and saltwater just because it's such a cheap reel that even if something gets messed up, like I can replace it. It's not like a Corrado that costs maybe $300 that if I mess it up, I'm out $300. So if I'm fishing freshwater, I'll throw out maybe a Senko, a Chatterbait, 
um, a crankbait. And I've been throwing a spoon lately for peacock bass. If I'm fishing saltwater, uh, usually I cast just the hook and whatever like natural bait I'm using, shrimp, squid, stuff like that. Um, I did that one time and I caught a whole bunch of fish and it's actually really fun. I like using the bait caster to catch fish. Uh, it's something different than just hearing peeling drag on the spinning reel. It's kind of just a nice break from all that. But I also tend to rig like some sort of swim bait on a jig head uh, to try to catch some sort of like snook or barracuda. And one of the things I really like about using the bait caster is that it casts much farther than the spinning reel. So if I really want to reach, you know, the other side of the canal where I see a school of jacks crushing little bait fish, I can actually reach it. Whereas if I had my spinning reel, it, it just wouldn't work out. And now finally I have my pride and joy, my all-purpose rod and reel setup. This is the Abu Garcia Aura S30 reel paired with another Ugly Stick Elite rod. Now the reason why I call this the all-purpose rod and reel combo is that using a bait caster is actually pretty difficult. I'm still learning how to use it. And oftentimes when I want to use it the most, it backlashes the most. So. Uh, the Aura S30 accomplishes what I want to do. It's a very similar setup, except that it doesn't backlash. So the Aura S30 cost, I believe, $70 for me. It's a very nice reel. It's not the greatest quality. It has scratched a little bit, but that's probably from me not being careful. I drop my, my rod and, and reel on like grass, on rocks, so it's probably my fault. But overall, it's a very solid reel. It has a very metallic type feel, and I really like that. I don't like plastic reels, even though I have so many plastic reels. And it just, it just feels very nice. It has a 5.8 to 1 gear ratio. Uh, again, not bad, but also not great. Uh, but overall, I think that this is a very nice reel for the price. Going with the rod, uh, it's essentially the same as the baitcaster. It's an ugly stick elite. It's medium action, six foot six, except this is a two piece. Now, in all honesty, um, I did not want to get it as a two piece. I wanted a one piece, but I bought the wrong one. And then I just didn't return it, whatever. Uh, but a two piece rod isn't bad. In fact, it's actually better for portability. Um, but I don't know, I just like having one big rod. So that's the one thing I can change about this setup is yeah, I'd use a one piece rod. But anyways, let's talk about how I rig it. So this rod is spooled with the 30 pound spider wire camo braid, just like the one from the inshore spinning reel combo. 30 pound braid is perfect for the fish that I target. I target anything from pinfish all the way to jack creval. And uh, this gives me just a very wide range of fish that I can catch. I've caught uh, peacock bass with this uh, reel. I've caught big snapper and it's just a very effective combo. Along with the 30 pound braid, I usually tie on a 20 pound leader, uh, just in case there's like a really big fish that I just cannot catch. Like I, the, the point is, since I have braid, I don't wanna lose a lot of braid because braid costs a lot of money. So if I'm going to break off because a fish is too big and too heavy, I'd rather it break off on the leader so I don't lose my braid. And even though it's 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, uh, that doesn't mean that a 20 pound fish is going to break off. If you manipulate the drag enough, you can pretty much catch fish much, much heavier than the pound test that you are using. And as far as lures and baits, I throw pretty much anything. I'll throw natural baits on hooks with sinkers. I'll throw lures. I'll throw pretty much anything to catch whatever is available. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I have a pretty fair collection of rods and reels uh, and I'm gaining more knowledge as I go along with this whole process. I also wanna mention, so my birthday is coming up and I am considering getting some more rods and reels. So if you guys have any suggestions, I'm looking more between like the $100 to $200 range. If you have any suggestions for good spinning reels or bait casting reels, Please make sure to leave them below in the comments and I can do some research uh, so that I can get some better quality fishing gear. Please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps with the growth of this channel. I have been seeing some growth lately and that makes me pretty excited. 
Um, I also have an Instagram account that has also been growing. Uh, make sure to follow it at the real GPU. I'll leave a link down below in the description. And again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.